Welcome back to the Black Parade, mission six. Kept away from view. We have a scriptorium to loot. We have a council tower to loot. An interpreter's tower to loot and a room of maps to explore. Once we've finished here, we're gonna go back out the library, which is easy, easy enough to get back to the restricted library. I drop down from here without hurting myself or without making too loud of a noise. Well, let's find it out. Keepers, I need your help. You heard nothing. Dang it! God oh, dang it! Ah. Whatever, comedy of errors time. We've had printing presses for like 150 years at least by uh, your own explanations I've just been reading about. So why do you still got dang manual scriptoria? Makes no sense. All right, let's get back up there. Before too many uh, reinforcements come. There we go, I managed to sort of salvage that situation, sort of vaguely. Not really. Let's throw a moss there so I can do that without noise next time. Just wait a minute, see if anybody comes running. Otherwise I'll drop down and grab that vase and be on my merry. It's the good news is we got to sort out the scriptorium. The floor of it, where people were working, relatively quickly. What's that? Did I miss a valuable candlestick there? That's not valuable, is it? No, that's just a cheap one. What I'm actually waiting for, I want to see if the people come back and sit down and resume work. I'm curious, because they're all sitting there copying books, right? I'm curious if they will uh, be able to resume that. I have finished my um, healing potions now, haven't I? Yeah. Well, I don't suppose waiting any longer is going to be worth my while. Curious, but... Uh, I'm not going to disrupt the entire episode with hours of waiting just for that. History of Delumbo, Codex Volume 57. Located far to the south beyond the arid wastes, the kingdom of Jalambo draws to it the travelers and merchants with its wealth and power. The oldest trace of the kingdom dates back to 215. The territory was inhabited by many nomad tribes fighting for control of land and water. In 250, the war chief Munza Ar-Rahman I, the wise from the Jania tribe, managed to take control of the great Lake Yeremia and started building the first city of Jalambo, Munzaduba, which became its capital. The Jania territory officially became the Jalambo kingdom in 252 after the union of Munza Ar-Rahman's son, Magan Ar-Rahman, and Keta Hazm, ruler of the Jalambo nomads who had the rest of the territory under their control. Jalambo was discovered in 349 by merchants from Blackbrook who lost their way in the southern desert. Upon returning to their home city, they brought with them an impressive amount of silk and spices. They spoke of a mysterious land with towns built of red stone and numerous sculptures made of pure gold. At first brushed off as a mere tale, the existence of the kingdom was confirmed when a caravan from the south reached Roxburgh with a vast amount of gold, said to have ruined the value of coin for five years. In modern times, Jalumba's relations with outsiders are entirely limited to trade. The Jalumbi's economy is primarily based on the export of gold, jewels and spices, but also ornamental weapons from the forges of Drogo. Despite Jalambo's nomadic origins, no hostility is ever observed. Okay. That sounds like that might be people returning. Hmm. 
wonder what the interpreter meant by this. No, oh, somebody coming into this room. Okay. <sighs> A lot of footsteps. Is that you, Elder? <sighs> yes, yes, it's just me. Well, the people down below aren't returning, but this guy was nearly catastrophic. Good stuff. All right. Uh, this is here, I suppose. Yeah, we're on the northeast side. I guess I circle right round the council tower. Whoops. Wrong button there for a second. Ah, they've got their little alcoves for voting. A little fed up with the way the superior elder looks down on us. <laughs> what a title. Ah, can't find anything here. Are they both looking for some? These halls are not for profane eyes. Yeah. You cannot be allowed <sighs> to leave. The interpreter meant by this. Where are you? <coughs> Invisible. Right, so he was not invisible until he started fighting me. <sighs> Waste of a flash bomb, but I guess it's fine. I've got a spare. Three spare. Um, let's go this way. This seems to be the direction that the, uh, the trolls are going. We should hopefully not run into anybody head first. Uh, so I'm ki I guess they're supposed to be using spirit potions to hide themselves when it becomes oh okay, he's, he's coming this way no valuable books there anything on top quiet Kim quiet can you be subtle? Do you know any <sighs> humility? No. All right, what's south of here? Uh, is that the steps to the interpreter's tower? Will you stop making noise? The darkness here really dulls one's senses. Back to work. God. What was that title again? Compendium of City Streets. That was extremely uh, lucky for me. Get a save in that dark corner and let's keep going. There's our loot goal just about, right? We're going to get 1600 of these frogs. I mean, coins. No, wait, what? 
Wasn't I just here? Is this the council tower again? Was I was I on the lower floor of it? Oh, the way to interpret this tower is on the lower floor. I'm a little confused though. There is that book again. Ah, can't find anything in here. It's definitely the council tower. I've not been here. So I guess an upper floor of the council tower which is not marked on the map. I guess that's fine. I guess that makes sense. Another... Who goes there? He also has money. There is not another floor above us, that's it. There's someone skulking around here. So he's a guy I just robbed, right? Yeah. Oh, and they've got the torches here, which they will use to uh, they'll bring them and they'll light them up to signal their votes. Yes, yes, yes. Someone didn't put theirs away. Have I been in there? Yes, this is a superior elder's office. Right, right, right. Makes sense. <sighs> Well, that was almost a massive fail. What about this guy going up and down the stairs? Because his timing could be very bad for us if we walk into him on the stairs. Although maybe we could just use a spirit approach and get past him. No. Ah! I didn't... I was trying to prop up the door. Reload, that was a waste. Oh, we could just wait for him to finish coming up the stairs. Too dark. Place is too dark and cold. <clears throat> Who's this in the shadows? Nobody. These ancient halls are getting to me. Oh, that light. Must concentrate. Light was going very bright. It's had quite a lot. It didn't look like it. Looking around, it didn't look like it had any change, but. In brightness, but it seriously did. Okay, map time. Where are we? We just came out of. I don't remember where. There. Have I been in this section? I don't remember. Yes. Okay. So we've been up there, we've been up there, we've been up there. there. So I just want to keep going around this way. On the study of primitive civilizations of yore and why one of them was better than the others, by Lord Clive M. Brasco. Kulib was far from making all its economical possibilities a reality. Indeed, it was far too isolationist for that. It was socially too weakened by its excess production for the god kings, dead made gods or greater gods. It was economically slowed down by the hoarding of precious metals in its temples, which resulted in a lack of intensive circulation. Therefore, in this isolationism, it is highly probable that the Kulibian civilization was highly developed but did not find any partner for equal trade. The Kulibians, convinced of their superiority, were long prejudiced against foreigners and stayed close to their ancestral traditions, which may explain their desire to isolate themselves. 
It is also important to note that Kulib's power and the power of its administration was so important that, even when it ceased to be a creative power and to represent a living civilization, it was still standing and maintained by its last administrative officials. <sighs> There we go, falling asleep. Fascinating material there, Mr. What's your face? Who's that? Damn it. Where is this? I don't know where I'm going, but I'm trying to get away from that guy. This is west? No, I don't want to go to South Tower. That's the South Tower. Okay, this looks safer. Will you stop making noise? And that's north. Okay, so we've done a full circle. Where's the stairs down? How do we get to the lower floor? The map shows stairs down the middle of the council tower and they're not there. That's a, that's a fabrication. It shows stairs all around it. There's not a single visible staircase. Like this is east stairs, west stairs. I'm on the... I'm on the north side. I don't know, maybe there are stairs. Maybe, okay, if we go around to the eastern side, maybe we'll find them. Let's try it. That book doesn't belong here. That book doesn't belong here. Bright Cobble, from prosperity to poverty. As with other oldest parts of the city, Bright Cobble was initially limited to just a few buildings, among them a hammerite church next to an underground source of fresh water known as Laos Source. Due to its proximity to a water source, the village quickly gained interest for the richest families of the time, who wished to absorb it into the city, extending their vast plantations. A union was formed, and in the place of fields, there were soon textile workshops and vast mansions. The golden age of Bright Cobble began during the pre-industrial era, when the first electric lampposts were created and installed at its marketplace, giving the district its name. The new technology signaled the start to a period known as the Noisy Times, during which the rich families inhabiting Bright Cobble tried to display as much machinery as possible to gain power and respect in society. Only a mansion equipped with as much machinery as possible was considered a sign of a successful family. The end of the golden age of noisy times was marked by a blaze at the first workerless factory after a thunderbolt struck one of its collectors. With this event becoming known as the first fire caused by a machine, the opinion of the elite about electricity shifted, and soon most inhabitants moved to other quarters in fear returning to simple and archaic technologies such as torches and manual work. Abandoned or sold, the former prestigious buildings of the district were given the name Whistlers, referring to the old squeaking gears, and mostly converted into factories or cheap tenements. This is all that remains of Bright Cobble's former glory. Okay. So this should be where the stairs are. All right, there. It is indeed. A very... Oh no, it's, there's the stairs. Well, I can see them from here. Can I get through this? It's a bit small, isn't it? How do I get to the stairs? South side. I suppose. This guy has a purse. I have not looted from him. This is terrible news for him. Is that you? Elder? The darkness here really dulls one's senses. Must concentrate back to work. I wonder how many other random readable books there are in, book in the bookshelves. Like that one I just stumbled across. I'm not going to spend a lot of time searching, it'll just be. Uh, oh. oh, he's just stopping to read, okay. The staircase is here? The map does not entirely lie to me. There is a staircase, it does go down to the lower floor. Stop. 
stop this what racket. Can't you see I'm trying to concentrate? Concentrate away. There's someone else coming. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold. Well, as long as they stay on the uh, inside of the staircase, they should be okay. So, Council Tower, back to the ground floor. We have a few rooms around here to loot. North side, south side, and east side. Here is that book again. And we'd like to finish in the ah, scriptorium on the east side. Sometimes I swear they keep it cold in here so we don't fall asleep. Coming back, isn't he? That's what it sounds like. They don't understand. Yep. No, they don't understand. They See, if they're coming back down, that would be really annoying. Oops, that was too close for comfort as well. What the? That book doesn't belong here. Okay. We should go north out of here, let's go, we can go north and west and check out these two. Then we come around there, then we come around here, and then we finish up going back. We know that north exit is actually, is actually not where I need to be first. Because we can get out to the scriptorium that way, so we go there last. of the Glyph Warden. There we go. Objective complete. Young Oliver is now sleeping, but it is not his health that worries me. His report of a statue moving by itself is what's troubling me, for I have heard of the same phenomenon occurring in several of our compounds. Our stone market seat, Glyph's vigil and glass lock, to name a few. Could our glyph of enchantment be responsible for this? Could it be the result of some mischief from its part? Granting us vision is one thing, but giving statues sentience is another. Glyph's misbehaving, for lack of a better term, is also concerning, for it has happened a few times in the past few years, the most notable example being Keeper Catalina's scalding of her writing hand when she was working on a complex essay. Too many questions and no answers. Oh, I, I only just noticed there's a little uh, Keeper logo in, the, in here instead of the usual one. The keyhole with a key in the keyhole. Very neat. Good touch. Nice touch. Good detail. All right. Office of the Glyph Warden seems to have nothing for me. Do you see? Does the Glyph Warden have any secret doors? Seems to be no. There's not really any room. I mean, I guess there's room on the south and west side, right? For sure. Feels like the sort of person who might have a secret door. Let's take a slightly closer look. Well, all right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say that's a no. Okay, so I wanna keep going. I wanna get around the middle, I'll head straight south. Okay. Tower. 
very like the cutscene in uh, Thieves 3. Same sound as well. And it's, it's a nice touch. I'm not the world's biggest fan of Thieves 3, but that's, that's a nice sound. Uh, they're clearly drawing on. They clearly want to keep keep in uh, in with it here. So I like the details. I like the attention to detail. Dissension among the Hammerite Order by Keeper Hemdal. The balance we must protect within the city is fragile and has mainly to do with the conflict between the two main factions vying for its control, the Pagans and the Hammerites. However, it would be unwise to ignore the conflicts brewing within these factions. Whereas the Pagans are mostly in agreement on their methods and beliefs in their endeavors. The Hammerite Order has found itself divided on several fronts. The main school of thought is known as the Builder's Teaching and is entirely focused on the righteousness of the soul to maintain an organized and active society. Their methods consist of choosing few quality members rather than recruiting a large quantity without scrutiny and making use of fear tactics to safeguard order and instill respect of the law. This doctrine, however, does not focus on fighting paganism nor on the expansion of cities, which is where the disagreements come from. In Blackbrook, the main ideology is known as the Fellowship of the Builder. Its members, less focused on justice, choose to focus on smithing and trading to spread the Builder's words via endeavour. Referred to as merchants in disguise by the Holy Council due to the fortune accumulated by their High Priests and the rarity of arrests, their main disagreement with the Builder's teaching is the use of fear to control public order. Instead, they prefer to leave this work to secular police and to focus more on fighting the tricksters' worshippers and on urban work, which makes the Fellowship highly popular with the nobility. On the other hand, the Red Cog Hammerites are rarely seen inside cities and are famous for their aggressive attitude. The members of this doctrine are active along countryside roads, protecting travellers and woodcutters from pagans and woodland creatures. This ideology is however controversial, and several of its members were accused of sorcery and heresy due to their skewed interpretation of the Builder's teaching and acts of cruelty against innocents. It also focuses on quantity rather than quality, hiring en masse from the Order's courts. Besides, it is the only school of thought that does not apply the Nymph Presumption Law, thus freely accepting women into the Order. While these three doctrines have complemented each other for the most part, they are slowly shifting towards a schism, especially after the arrest of several priests of both the Fellowship and the Red Cog ordered by the Holy Council for apostasy, a sign of an uncertain future. Guess what, there will be mechanists. It sounds like the Red Cog is the uh, in this setting is the order from which they came at least possibly the countryside bit well maybe Karis did come from there and hates the countryside so much and that's the reason for all his wanting to destroy everything like that's the reason for his wanting to destroy everything that's a, that's a way of saying it I suppose He's going back. The darkness here really dulls one's senses. Back to work. Is that a healing potion I see on the chair? I cannot believe the incompetence on display amongst this current stock of scribes. Spilling ink goes out of ancient Of course, that clip was right. Simply unforgivable. Ugh. It is. Glory be. Okay. That means I just need to head north. Someone's talking around here. Did you notice it missing? That was nothing. Will you stop making noise? Shit, where's my spirit potion? I have all the time. What? Who are you? Who's that? I don't see. This is the main library. I've not been in here on the lower levels. Okay. Enjoy playing games. An unwise decision. I love how he said my aim is true as he missed. That's very good. You're not one of us. Well, here's some excitement. Who's that? That I was not planning on. Got lost. I came too far. I should have turned right. So I guess I need to explore this lower level, the central, li central library. There was loot here I had not stolen, so... The Builder's Machine. 
In the beginning, everything was dark, raw, and wild. Life was limited by the fear of shadows and the beasts within, all ruled by the monstrosity that is the trickster. And in the middle of this eternal night, the first sparks of light brought with it the Master Builder, enveloped in a bright shine. Chasing the darkness deep into the maw of the beast with his hammer, he offered his vision to mankind so that they would see all that surrounds them and gave them hands so that they could process the raw into the refined, cleaning away all impurity. And so did the faithful, guided by his wisdom, start to follow him as a beacon through the mist, so that man learns instead of fearing, tames instead of enduring, and faces instead of fleeing. Thus did mankind, under his guidance, explore forests and change its clearings into villages and waters into bridges. This is how the Builder's machine came to be, transmitting his teachings to his children so that the knowledge keeps going and the world keeps expanding beyond what is unknown and dark, taking over the uncontrollable and looking in the face of nature to build a realm he envisioned for the faithful. Whoever contributes to his dream is part of his machine, working like a cog so it moves further in wisdom and light, across petty wars and ignorant squabbles. Cursed be the ones who work against the society he made, because there is no worse sin than stopping the march of progress with fake knowledge, stolen tools, and laziness. So be it known to all of those worshipping the trickster and the basic instincts he infused in the hearts of beasts we used to be, praise the Master Builder. How did you get in? Halls are not for profane eyes. You cannot be allowed to leave. There's someone skulking around here. Let's hope they don't look up. What? Who are you? Who are you? What are you doing here, intruder? He's going. He's going. You know, there's, there's invisibility there. Both of them are. The other guy just wandering the library is unconcerned, but I guess his job is not protection. Papers. What the? How did you even manage to find this place? I oh, saw the body. And this guy's gonna see the body too. How did you get in? I need your help. Well, I guess Hume is never gonna be a true keeper if he uh, is discovered this easily. What? Who are you? It's not a good level to uh, line, really. I mean, alert to level two, sure. But if they're exploring and not seeing anything and saying, what, who are you? It's a little odd. Okay, they're still gonna be on the alert for a while. The immediate danger is past. God. But they didn't hear that. Sounds like they did, they did not. He had a footstep. I have all the time in the world to find you. Whoever you are. What? He just teleported back to his chair. He just teleported back into his chair and went back to work. I guess that's... The good news is he's given up searching for me, but that's, that's very funny. Did you hear that? How this is unbecoming of a keeper. What's he working Reveal with? yourself. Can I read it? No. Alright. People put noisy dang tile floors in a Jaffin library. He is a problem. Still have two flash bombs with you. If he is I see. You enjoy playing games. An unwise decision. I mean, I enjoy playing some games, like... If they're labeled Thief, then maybe... Oh god, these... Okay, I feel like the library does not have any more... 
valuables for me. I should get out of here. Cowardice is undercover. As soon as I can. Reveal yourself. Just got another book to read, though. A brief history of the city's great family. It is composed by Keeper Creon, second lawmaster, during the year of 754, as it was commissioned by Keeper Lutetius, third Keeper of Darkwatch. Better for a crowd, he trampled underfoot the imperial decrees of his own cousin instead, thinking that there was none left alive in the entire barony who was interested in seeing that they should be carried out. Because of this particular event, the heritage of the Black family's blood lineage was the issue of ambitions and interests that went way beyond simple blood feuds between powerful families, where the Baron and the Emperor were willfully engaged. Thus was the prefiguration of Catherine Black's woes, half a year after when she sowed the seeds of a short but violent civil war between her two remaining brothers. Paragraph 6. On the state of childlessness of Lady Catherine Black and its consequentious on the Mad War of 398. However, to understand how the civil war rang the death knell of the Black dynasty, one must make a pause and understand the incident that took place a little before the aforesaid event. Old and childless, Lady Catherine thought about adopting a parent more or less close to her to pass on her opulent heritage, she immediately designed Rustwood Bresling II, to whom she immediately offered her favourite chatelaine, Juman Court, as well as her enchanted hair comb. But be it either because she wasn't really convinced by her own choice, either compelled to give in more pressing topics, or either subjected to a whim of late, soon after the designation she tried to nullify this decision to the benefit of Lady Leonella de Criard, widow to the late Thomason de Criard, which would have let her sons take over her fiefdom soon after her death. If the chronicles are to be believed, this was only motivated by Catherine's graciousness, who only wanted to restore the once respectable de Criard house, who suffered disgrace by the hand of the cruel Lord Thomason, who bribed petty vassals and knaves, upon the orders of a warlock, rumours said, to assassinate the grand compulsor Morgan the Bold, 1392. If the imperial bureaucracy raised... Uh, sorry, 392. If the imperial bureaucracy raised their entire castle to the ground in response, as well as dispatching assassins, Thomasin de Criard, however, managed to obtain a pardon from the Emperor himself through influence and well-placed bribes, before ultimately meeting his strange doom, devoured by his very own horses. The second adoption sowed the roots of Discordia as far from being the venerable, gentle and vericund noblewoman described by the Chronicles, Lady Lionella was swift in taking full advantage of her newfound situation by securing gauges and complicities among the local gentry. For his part, Roswood Bresling II still purported to assert his rights and brought both Lady Catherine and Lady Leonella to a trial before the Imperial Diet, the latter refusing to settle the dispute. Well, that's a... Uh, a lot of irrelevance to me. Okay, I've got one more still. I want to use it. Yes, I'm on the way out. I don't, I, I'm going to use it here. Where am I trying to go? East. I'm trying to go in here, that's right. Okay. Room of maps. Alright, uh, nobody's in here. This feels like a nice, relatively safe place to, to chill. Ah, here's the map of, the, of Bone. Not the city. Marco Quarter, Gersberg, blah blah. Can't read it. The Isle, the Pike, Bridges. Various bridges and bergs and places. What about this? Is this the city? No, oh, don't, don't stand too close to it. Bridge quarter, day port, south quarter, old quarter, wayside docks, crags cleft out that way. Just barely readable. South quarter. What? I suppose that is south. <laughs> oh no, that's north quarter there. That's south quarter. I was misreading. Still, I mean, that is south from, from where I'm standing. Uh, but, like, north quarter is west of south quarter. New quarter, old quarter, south quarter, 
Do I have more than four quarters? I'm just... Hmm. Lampfire Hills, High Watch, blah. Eastbourne, Eastport, Shoalsgate. Oh, there we are. I mean, uh, I am. I'm not a fan of the idea of mapping the city. To me, it's it's reducing it to to a known quantity, and I think that's a mistake. Takes away the mythic qualities that that is built on. But having said that, that is a very cool map, and I love maps. Uh, so you know, in balance, I think I think good work. That's what I think. In balance, Let's stand on top of one of these lovely tables so I can get this into the side of the beam. I think I want to go back through the air ducts here. Out we go. I thought that'd be a quick tour, but that's been 40 minutes now of running around there. So we want to get back out here and round to the restricted library again. Yeah, so just west, north. Yeah, okay. Honestly, I might just go. Somewhat loudly and noisily because uh Hey who's this? I can the see shadows. That. Twas These surely an acolyte. Nervous after meeting an elder like me. Sometimes I swear we keep was upset the cold in here so we don't fall asleep. It's actually not too noisy, that's the nice thing about this path. Someone's skulking around here. The darkness here really dulls. That was close, but this is a nice wide staircase. I see. You enjoy playing games. Right, they can hear that. Unwise decision. I don't want to die though. Oh my god! Oh my god! Oh my god, that's, that's amazing. Stop hiding and stop running and stop hiding and be killed. Caught and crush. Found you and kill you and found you and kill you. I had no idea the statues would come to life. And crush. That cool, but also <laughs> terrifying. <laughs> All right, I like I, that's. <sighs> Where am I? I'm trying to get back to the library. I had a lot of disorientation there. Okay. You need to be careful in the forbidden library. That's a lot of work for... Uh... That explains why those Keeper statues were a little bit weird looking. I just thought, you know, they're just a little bit weird looking. Doesn't mean you do literally have to creep crawl across here because people will hear you and it's just oh my god, that's just kinda shitty. Like 
thief was not designed around the creep crawling stop start. It was designed around moving that slowly, making again. small amounts of noise. Bendium but having people street. not be fully in Asia all the time. Uh, but here, this technique is necessary unless you have 7,000 more arrows. Alright, she's going back upstairs. That's good news for me. I guess I can try going up the quick way. I'm trying not to be seen this time. I want to say it's a quick way, it's only relatively quick. Oh, so she's going up the stairs. I'm, I'm basically going to go at the same pace. Wait for her to go past so she doesn't see me. So that's okay. Still faster than me going the long way. <sighs> a little bit of stop starting. the way down. Alright, I'm done. Oh, I can't close it that way. Alright. Okay, well, uh, out into the town. Gamal has made a tactical error. She thought she and her statues could kill anyone who even suspected her, but turns out there's a witness. Where's the way up? Oh, it's up here. I oh, know I've got to climb this troublesome rope again. Come on. Okay. All right, it's less troublesome today. I will accept that. Okay. Here we are, back at the shop. So does this go up to my apartment? <clears throat> Who's there? <sighs> Someone there? Nothing making noise now. Well, this doesn't look like my apartment. Who's there? Is someone there? Seems quiet enough now. Oh well. This is my apartment building. That's the bridge, right? This is not my apartment. The problem is I don't know which one is mine. Hello? <laughs> nice, nice painting there. But I don't want to end the mission. By going to my apartment too soon. Was this my apartment here? <laughs> How do I know? No 
open door. The City Tribune, Bloodshed in Sutheim Heights. A street skirmish erupted last morn's day at Lydecker Avenue of Sutheim Heights as two bands of rogues clashed in what the Baron's police refers to as a territorial dispute. The commission was quickly put a stop to by Captain Gosbert and his stout men, who managed to capture most of those involved. No civilians were injured. The apprehended criminals, all of whom are soon to be executed, have been identified as members of the Downwind Thieves Guild. As of yet, it is unclear who the members of the other party were, but the most honourable under Commissioner de Navan has assured the Tribune that that scum shall not escape justice. They were lucky to get away this time, but they better not show their faces in shit time ever again. More on page 8. Still no bonfires at the last bonfire festival? The streets of High Watch are full of activity these days as preparations for the annual last bonfire festival continue, with streets being cleaned and groomed. Nevertheless, as citizens eagerly await the return to the tradition, Messer Brinda has declared once again that no bonfires shall be allowed. We all remember the great fire of 782, although the chances of flames spiralling out of control are slim these days due to all the precautions introduced in light thereof. I cannot in good faith authorise the burning of large stakes within the borough's limits. The festival promises to be full of excitement regardless, and host guests from neighbouring cities. But now the citizens and your dear editor shall wait and hope that bonfires return next year. More on page 12. Oh wait. Have I... Have you seen this door before? Right, this is the top of that area. My apartment must be one of the ones up here, right? If, if this is my apartment, but that's the bridge across right at the start. So I'm a little confused. There's not another floor that I can see. Hello? Is someone there? Nope. Don't take off. That's my apartment. Anathema. Let's drop something in front of it. As a reminder. I have more town to loot. You can't you can't finish the mission for me like that. It's just rude. So that is my apartment building. It's convenient, isn't it? There's such a convenient secret way from my apartment building. Right into the restrict keep a restricted library. I mean What more could you ask for? Wonderful. Mm -hmm. Hello? Anyone there? Uh, guess not. <laughs> This is such a weird mission. They've built so much town, and the entire setup of the mission at the start is for you to ignore it all. Oh, okay, that's what that's these steps here. Oh, there's okay. There's a shop up there I have not been to. This, of course, was the one with the keeper library access. <laughs> There's a shop up there. I want to try getting into. Hello? Is someone there? Oh well. Don't know what it was. Yeah, then I've got a whole time to explore this old manor to rob, and I think I'm gonna do that. Who's there? Oh, that's not a door. Okay. Is someone there? Well, Hello? we've got the chains across to that manor, so that seems like a good way in. We've just got to go down a little. A very way, weird way to structure a mission. It's like, okay, follow this guy and ignore the whole city, and now feel free to loot the city, but careful, don't go out to your own 
dang uh, apartment. Yeah, don't go to the room which you're not, which you don't remember is yours because there were so many at the start. And you weren't paying attention to which was your room because you knew it implicitly, right? Big fancy hammerhead place there. Okay, well, it's been just about an hour. I don't know how much longer I'm going to spend crawling around the city. It's probably going to be at least half an hour. So I'm going to end here and next episode we'll break into this mansion. See you, see you soon.